the town of Henley-on-Thames. It once had Boris Johnson as its MP and still has other big-name locals. Nine days before Christmas, late in the afternoon, a group of Range Rovers turned up at this NHS surgery. An elderly American, one of the most powerful men on earth, had been invited for his local Covid jab. One of the first people in Britain to be vaccinated. And tomorrow, Rupert Murdoch is 90. This is the Michael Crick Report for Mail Plus. Murdoch and his wife Jerry Hall spent most of lockdown at his grand house near Henley, where the village shop promotes his newspapers. Though the Murdochs are right now in America, it's thought. They'll light the candles tomorrow for a man who still owns scores of papers around the world. Serious and tabloid, but also a TV pioneer with Sky and Fox News. But there's some past they'll want to forget. Alan Rusbridger edited The Guardian, which exposed Murdoch's news of the world for phone hacking. You have to give him credit for some things like the advance in technology. Uh, he loves newspapers, he loves journalists, and that's more than could be said of some proprietors who are in it just for the money. But I think he's had an awful effect in some ways, right up to um, President Trump and Fox News. I think he's coarsened debate in this country. He's used his newspapers for political ends and for his own business purposes. And so he's got a lot of answering to do on the negative side as well. It was probably Rupert Murdoch's lowest point as he sat humiliated by MPs. One sentence. This is the most humble day of my life. Former Murdoch editor Neil Wallace was acquitted of phone hacking, but four colleagues were jailed. Uh, I think the uh, tragedy of the phone hacking scandal, yes, I, I, it, you can't get away from it. It was awful, damaged the company and damaged him, I believe. Um, but uh, I don't think that can simply uh, ignore, if you like, everything else that he has achieved what he did in Fleet Street of, of taking, beating off, if you like, the shackles of uh, trade unions that were basically running the industry, uh, liberated just about every national newspaper company uh, there was and allowed for a period of expansion and change that was long, long overdue. Murdoch's father, Sir Keith, was called the kingmaker of Australian politics between the wars, said to have made and broken two Aussie PMs. Rupert, here with John Kennedy in 1962 in the White House, has always been a political creature. Murdoch was actually on the left when he was a student here in Oxford nearly 70 years ago and famously had a bust of Lenin in his room here at Worcester College. Over the years, he's backed Labour leaders in Britain and Australia, but also, more recently, people like Thatcher, Reagan and Trump on the right. And he's clearly a man who loves wielding political influence and power. We saw that during the Leveson hearings nearly 10 years ago. Mr Murdoch said that he really didn't like our European policies. This was no surprise to me, that he didn't like our European policies and uh, he wished me to change our European policies. If we couldn't change our European policies, his papers could not and would not support the Conservative government. Murdoch denies that, but in Australia, two former prime ministers of different parties want Murdoch's power investigated. As prime minister, I was still fearful of the Murdoch media beast. That's just the truth of it. I could pretend that I wasn't, but I was. But Neil Wallace says Murdoch's influence on politics is exaggerated, and politicians are wrong to fear him so much. You cannot persuade people to do something they don't want to do. You can't persuade people to believe something that they are not ready to believe. And uh, I think that what you saw with Murdoch was he was a populist genius. 
and sorry, is a populist genius. Yet Alan Rusbridger says Murdoch strikes fear way beyond politics. The phone hacking story which The Guardian did, what that was all about, you, you realise that he was a man who cleverly in each market that he was in, he would have a, an upmarket paper, you know, the, the Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Australian, he'd have a TV station that made the money, but they had the tabloids and he, he was prepared to ruthlessly interrogate anybody's private lives. And that went beyond politics, that, that created fear in the police, in the media, in regulators, in parliament. Uh, and that's why I think, in the end, you have to chalk an awful lot up to the negative side. Two years ago, Murdoch sold most of his business to Disney, but retained most of the journalism, his newspapers and Fox News. Rod Tiffin is one of many Murdoch biographers. Yeah, yeah. Are we seeing the final days of the Murdoch empire? I think we're certainly um, closer to the end than the beginning. I think... Um, uh, I wouldn't say final days, but, you know, it's hard to imagine where it's going to be in a decade's time. Uh, I'm not suggesting anything drastic is going to happen in the next few years. But, you know, it's, you would be guessing wildly if you said that the Murdoch Empire will still be thriving in 10 years' time. Neil Wallace, is this the end of Rupert Murdoch now he's 90? Is he just going to retire or is there perhaps one more deal? Michael, I think both of us know there, there will be one more deal in Mr. Murdoch until the moment they screw down the lids of the coffin. He is simply, uh, that's who he is. He is a deal maker. He is a, an iconoclast. He is a, uh, an innovator. <sighs> Murdoch has always shown an ability to bounce back. And remember, his mother, Dame Elizabeth, lived to be almost 104. <laughs> Though not, I suspect, by eating a lot of cake like this.